so we're uh, starting a little bit later than usual today. It's Saturday, so I, I slept late or later. But we have work to do ahead of us. So we are still working on our Airbnb clone using Vulkan.js. And what we want to do today, today is uh, just style this page. So this is the page for an individual listing. And right now it's very, um, very bare bones. So you have the map here. And then you have a, a card using the, the card component that just spits out uh, the document, in this case, the room, as best as it can and tries to, uh, you know, if it's an image, it shows an image. If it's a number, it, it formats it, but it doesn't do much else. So um, let's see. We also have to, si to style this sidebar here. And we have a, a mockup to help us, to guide us. So let's log in. To Envision. Oh, that's Airbnb. Wait, Envision is here. So we have both a mockup and the actual Airbnb site. Of course, we're not gonna copy like still the Airbnb design, but it can be very um, useful, you know, just to understand like how things fit together and what kind of elements should be expected. So. For example, one thing you can already see is it keeps the check-in and check-out dates in memory. Um, I don't know if we want to do that, but in memory in the URL, I meant. So I don't know if we want to replicate that, but that's interesting to see. When you're looking at an app, like in order to emulate its features, you see a lot of things that you wouldn't really pay attention to otherwise. By the way, this is the, the blank state version of the room. And it's not too different from our mockup anyway. The main thing is we have the photo here. Um, taking up the full width of the page. Um, I don't think we want to do that just yet. We will keep a, a somewhat neutral design. So we'll use the same layout, but uh, maybe not full width for now. This way we don't need to think about breaking out of our um, normal layout. Although that could be a fun thing to work on. So let's see. For now, at least, uh, what we want to do is, well, have those photos come first. So you can see each photo is repeated um, six times. And that's because when we are getting the photos from Cloudinary, first of all, we're getting them in multiple formats. So 600 width, 300, and 1000, which is probably the original. And then each one has two URLs, one HTTP and one HTTPS. We don't need two URLs. We can use just HTTPS, but that's the way Cloudinary uh, gives us the data. And that's the way we store it. But um, let's, uh, let's go back to our, um, I can close this. Let's go back to our component, which would be rooms page. And let's think about this. So. So we're, we're going to have a loading thing for the room. So that includes the photos and uh, the description and all of the room data. So let's call this rooms content. And the map will come later. But for now, we'll uh, show. That should. That should be good. Now let's create the room photos component. Just going to copy this as a shell. Okay, we can get rid of this rooms photos room none of this and um, let, let's keep that for now I don't think we need a button so what do we want to have actually huh if you look at the at Airbnb or the mockup you can see that you need so there's there's two things going on once there's this model that uh, pops up and then you can switch through each photo. 
Now switching through a photo, and then there's this, but okay, well, let's not do that for now. Switching through a photo, that means our, our component needs state. And the model, well, we already have the model uh, window component we can use. Now, do we, should this whole thing be the component? Probably, right. So this will include state, which means it needs to be a, a class. Now, there's ways to handle state with functional components using um, uh, recompose um, this library right there. It's probably overkill, though. Like you know, let let's keep things simple. Uh, return, sorry, return this okay and then constructor super this dot state equals empty object and uh, we'll have um, what should we call it um, left right so Actually, this state will have like a selected, like we want the, the photo number zero to be selected by default, and uh, left would do this dot set state selected to selected plus one or minus one maybe, and right would be plus one. Uh, we'll worry later about transitions or anything like that. I haven't actually done transitions in React before. Uh, I know there's libraries to help you do it, but it's not cr critical. So now um, um, there's also ways to not have to do binding. You could use. Uh, should we do that? Okay. Yeah. Let, let's do that. So I'm pretty sure if I do this, I won't have to bind because now um, um, arrow functions do not uh, change the value of this. And let's import it. Uh, wait. Okay, so yeah. here, okay. So I got my syntax wrong. Wait, okay, L let me double check. Um, So it's uh, equal and not okay. Really? I mean, yeah, you'd think Meteor supports class properties, so that's what we're trying to do, but maybe it doesn't. Uh, 
Uh, okay, I'll have to look into that later. Basically, class properties is like you want to be able to do a foo equals bar on the class and have that be true for like every instance of the class. But that, apparently, that's not something that's supported uh, really uh, out of the box. So, yeah, for now, let's do it like that. I'll, I'll look into how that works exactly later on. So um, we'll want two links. Uh, on click equals this dot left. Um, Sorry if I start sweating a lot, but I turned off the AC to, so that it didn't mess up the video sound and it's really, really hot, especially since I'm standing right next to that window. Okay, so I still have... Yes, no. Oh, was that the error? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I noticed that when I'm streaming, I have to f focus on what I'm talking about. So I focus on the code less, and then I end up making a lot of dumb mistakes or, or uh, yeah, or forgetting brackets and stuff like that. So. Uh, Sorry for that. I'm sure as I get the the hang of it, I will um, get more productive and stop making mistakes. Hey, I just saw that uh, Hakim is in the chat, so thanks for dropping by. Okay, now it should compile and okay. Uh, not quite. Selected is not defined. This set state, this state. I really need to get some uh, linting in there. I keep forgetting. Okay. So that's good. Now, if if we go to minus one, we want to loop around. So um, and then the same if we go over the number of photos so um this props room photos can always check my schema yeah it's called photos so it's going to be an array so i just want to get the length And um, so basically, if if it's equal to total photos, then instead of um, or rather, if it's equal to zero. We'll set it to total photos now. It's total photos minus one because uh, arrays are zero indexed. If not, uh, okay, this minus one. And then here we'll do the opposite. So if this dot selected state equals total photos, we'll set it to back to zero. 
and if not yeah that that looks good and um, we will want to add some photos so trying to remember okay that was a place in Bali well, let's find another place in Bali just so um, it makes sense Oh, that's, that was the place. Kind of want to go to Bali now. Actually, I had a chance and uh, I'm organizing an event in Kyoto um, in this fall. And I had a chance to do it in Bali, but I was the one who said, no, let's do it in Kyoto. Kyoto is great, which it is, but it can't really compete with Bali in terms of beaches and, uh, and palm trees, that's for sure. And outdoor pools. I'm sure I'll get a chance to go to Bali some other time. I, I don't want to sleep on a bed like that. It s seems like too unstable. And and Japanese toilets are much nicer anyway. So yeah, who cares about Bali? So let's edit our photo. I mean our room, and then just add oh look at that okay that's annoying so we will we'll have to wrap that uh, upload images mm, okay maybe, yeah cool maybe a couple more Okay, and so we have all our photos here, and now so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, zero, six. Okay, so first, okay, let's figure out how how many there actually are. So there's there are seven photos. So we want to go from zero to six. So, so there shouldn't be, so this is good, but this number seven is bad. So uh, right, if this state selected equals t total photos minus one, then we reset. Yeah, same as here, actually. Okay, perfect. Now we want to display this in a model pop-up. So here, where is it? Here, I'm gonna say, um, gonna Uh, not div, I mean components.model trigger. So the question here is what do we use as a trigger? We want to use that photo, uh, the main photo. So that would be emgsrc equals um, just, I guess, room.photos zero. And then we pick the format. So if you have a doubt, you can always, uh, well, you actually, you don't even need to inspect the React element. You can just look at uh, the card. So yeah, zero, and then you have the format. So we want zero, zero, or actually do we? We want number three, because that's going to be the large uh, image. So, and this is an array, so it's number two. And then secure URL. that and we probably want to wrap it in something just for styling and let's call it um, rooms 
rooms was rooms image rooms main image maybe or hero image okay yeah So I already have my rooms page block here. Let's um right, so we want to take it out of the that two column layout that we have going on here. So it's interesting, right? Because if we take it out, right now this is loading independently. Yeah, we have a small, small weird thing like where the layout is affecting the data loading. Because if if we want to take this, if we take it out here, where it would be, or actually here, so that it sits atop. Uh, the main column and the sidebar, then it's not inside the loading. And if we bring the loading up to this level, then you know the loading will affect that. But in this case, it's not a big deal. Um, so basically, what we want to do is probably do. Well, we do need a div, like an outer div, so. Um, we want to do this. So if it's loading, load this, and then um, so we have main and sidebar. Above this, we have. Actually, we probably need yet another div here. Um, <laughs> running out of names. Okay, so we had the whole page and then the rooms, uh, whatever, rooms main. We already have the main column. Um, rooms wrapper which has the hero image and then the contents and the content has main and sidebar and then we close all our divs looks like we have one too many maybe um so actually we don't okay yeah no, we can do that So wait, no, yeah, we don't need. Oh, yeah, we. D <laughs> so sorry, I'm getting so confused by this thing. So we'll have our page that wraps the whole thing up, including the loading. Then we have our wrapper. Then we have main for the main area. Content for the, for. Um, Contents for all the everything that's not the room. Then we have main for the main column and sidebar. Those two should be on the same level. And I do think we need one more. No, I, I guess not. Oh yeah, no, actually we do, what we do need is um, this. Okay. 
Okay. Wow, that, yeah, okay. It looks like all these uh, CSS classes also were too much for my uh, terminal. Now we don't need really need all these divs. We could you know cheat or not even cheat, but we could add some complexity at the CSS level to make this work. But I, f I would rather have uh, more divs and less CSS to be honest. Okay, so, okay, and then if we click this, perfect. Now, let's also add um, pointer cursor or a cursor pointer. And now that we can uh, worry about displaying the image, so. So this is where the state, the selected uh, value comes in because we want to do room dot photos and here select the number of the photo and uh, number three for the large format and then secure URL. not defined yes because it's uh, it's a class component so you always need this dot props I really like with functional components that you can uh, what do you call it um, destructure the, the props object in the function definition I don't know a way to do that in class components so this is undefined yes it should be two not three now, um, obviously, our code here will break if um, this will break if our photos are stored differently. So, like if the data is stored differently, we might need to do something about that. Okay, at least this is working. Um, the model window is a little bit small. I wonder if we can modify. So here we are using uh, the model.body thing, which is imported from React Bootstrap. So let's see what options we have on on the model uh, component here. Where is it? Overlays. Backdrop. Uh, do we want to backdrop? I think what I want to do is um, like not give it a size, just make it fit the width of the photo. Okay, so that looks interesting. Um, dialog class name equals custom model, and then we can change the custom model size. Yeah, if we could add a class in there, that should work. So class name equals this prop class name, but we don't have support for uh, dialogue class name. So let's do that. Okay, now we can pass this here, uh, model trigger, dialogue class name equals uh, Okay, rooms photos model.
Okay. Now, how do we go about styling this thing? We want to remove that white background. as well as the border. We want to remove max width. can see that uh, and then we want to center it so okay so that's for the content I guess that's good but we want to center the content inside the page um, so we can probably use a flexbox And well, align item. No. Um, okay, actually, it's still not quite. Maybe I don't want to give it a width. So, model content. Yeah, if I do this, you can't close it anymore. So actually, so I want to make this fit the size of the image, but I want the image to have a max width. It's kind of tricky. So here, max width, I guess 90% of the screen. Not sure if that's gonna work and should so do these have widths as well? So we don't want this to, to be that, that wide. Um, okay, I guess we do need to give this a max width then. No. Uh, okay, yeah, so yes. okay, so if I click here, yeah, because if the outer div is too wide, then it will disable clicking on the overlay to close the the photo. Um, 
which maybe is good actually maybe we do we want that I don't think we have a mock-up for that screen okay so let's say we do want that so we don't want a max width we just want to say width 100 percent then everything inside will be centered and we'll uh, give it a background this will be on top of the existing black overlay oh but now we have this oh, no, that doesn't work bad idea okay let's keep things simple for now then uh, so it's centered okay so I guess we didn't even need that but then it's not centered within the page actually it's not centered oh because there's the, these two these two guys okay so um it's always hard to style like other people's code even for something as simple li as this So we want to position this absolutely, probably 50% uh, from the top and this one will be left, let's say 10 pixels, probably we can see this. and then they'll uh, they'll each be 40 pixels high so and um, I might need to add some icons so I haven't that done that before or have I? Yeah. So maybe actually previous and next would be better named than left and right. So I want angle right and angle left. So previous angle left next angle right
Okay, now um, these things are not positioned correctly, and also we could make them bigger. And um, we want to do that. So the reason they're not positioned correctly is because something in uh, here is positioned. absolutely or relatively so model body has position rel relative um, model content as well and model dialog as well Okay, so this is proving to be pretty annoying to style. Um, so this should be minus, no wait, no that, that's correct, so why is rooms photos wider than rooms photos image oh because of that okay So one thing that's a bit weird is this one has position relative, but yeah, this one, okay. So we'll put them on the outside for now. So left, uh, we'll say minus 60. So it's not exactly like perfect. Uh, but it will work. You know, it's ideally this would be darker and these would be on the side and the image would be constrained because uh, if it's super wide, I don't know what will happen. But again, we're going for an MVP type thing here, um, not like perfection. Okay. So we have our general photo area. Next up, we have uh, the name and uh, amenities and stuff on the left column and uh, booking on the right. So first let's bring our booking back up because it went all the way down after we changed our CSS classes. So rooms main and rooms sidebar. Okay, rooms contents should be using a flexbox. Okay, the reviews and the map will both go all the way down below. So um, reviews are here. I might um, uh, 
outsource this to a new component. So document ID is left over from when um, I was loading these potentially before the room was loaded. So in this case, you would have a document ID, but not really a, a room, a room object yet. But now we are loading things afterwards, so it doesn't matter. these guys as well. So we said we'd put it here. And we also want to put the map down here. And remove that. Um, what about a user's bookings for that room? I think we don't need that here. And actually, we don't want to show the bookings form in a model. We want to show it like right here. So let's do this. OK, so we'll come back to the booking form later. For now, I'll just gonna, I'm just going to remove that uh, gray background because that's, that's ugly. So, okay, this works. Let's work on the main area here a little bit. I'm uh, actually going to keep that card um, for some of the fields, but some others, I'll just display them by themselves. So, uh, room page, going to create another component, rooms contents. And we need the collection as well. Okay. Now, we're going to have one uh, H2 tag. name maybe h3 so this should be I'm not sure what that should be it should probably shouldn't be the address mm, or at least not the full address but maybe guess this is in the neighborhood, but we're not storing the neighborhood, I think. Um, I don't even know like how you define a neighborhood and how Airbnb 
defines it. So that that's something that's really interesting, right? Y you'd think, well, okay, so here it says it, there's like the, the neighborhood, the city, and uh, the country. But like, so Osaka Shi is the city, Osaka Fu is the prefecture, and Sumiyoshiku is the, the, the district. But it might change for other countries, right? So, you know, like your geo-coded data might not always be f give you the same field. So what you show here, that's kind of ambiguous. And here it just says, uh, whatever street Tokyo, how do you get that Bishan street thing? Which field is it from? It's really hard to tell. So for now, we'll just show the city, I guess. And then we have some icons. We won't worry about that description. Then we have the amenities, and for the rest, I'll use the, um, the card component again, except I'm going to limit it to only the fields that we haven't uh, outputted yet. So, price per night, that would be in the booking section, I think. Uh, location, we don't want to show it. Uh, maybe f uh, country, zip code, city, address. So we don't want to show this either. Number of beds. Bed number. Rules. Um, room type, type. Room type and property type. So I think this might have display flex. Yeah, we don't want that because this is now um, Oh no, we have two rooms contents. Okay. So this is actually more like rooms main. Let's organize it like this instead. And we'll do that as well. Huh, probably. Okay, probably not. We don't need that. Okay. This should be good. Now we have rooms main, which is all our main uh, column for a room. And it has the class rooms main. And cannot find module rooms contents. Right. Because it's now rooms main. Uh, 
room's main Right, okay, so this is an array, so it's not liking that. No, apparently that wasn't the problem. Oh yeah, okay. Cool. So we have our photo, then our title, then subtitle, description, amenities, everything else, map, reviews. You know what, I'm going to remove that uh, page title class. Nice. So rooms reviews. Um, 
we probably don't need to use the card just to display a single field so we're gonna modify this as well reviews list inst here instead of using a card let's create a new reviews item Do we want to have um, a way to edit the comment? I guess. Oh, review is spelled wrong? I'm sure it is somewhere. Uh, I mean, uh, we'll get an error if it is, so let's see. Thanks, uh, the justice bot. Hey. Nice comment from Chad. This is fascinating. Thanks for doing this. Uh, no problem. I'm really glad that people find it interesting. To be honest, like I didn't think watching me just stumble through building an app would be that great, but uh, maybe there's some things you can learn from it. So that's that's awesome. Rooms. So actually, let's find our uh, review CSS file, which we don't have. So create a new one. reviews item and we'll just say uh, margin bottom spacing um, something like that no nothing fancy There's no light gray. Oh, it's light dash gray. We'll probably come back to reviews later to add the edit button, maybe add the user. Also, another thing that's important is not letting you review unless you've actually stayed in that uh, room. But that, that's not super important. For now, let's uh, work on the booking form and then we'll be done with this screen. Again, if we look at our mockup, check in, check out, number of guests we don't have yet, and then request to book. Uh, we have the price here, which we'll have to update depending on the number of nights booked. Okay, that's interesting, that's fun. So number one, uh, add number of guests. We have our bookings new form here, which already has a state, so that's handy. We can add um, uh, something like this. Uh, 
label number of guests and then let's use um, are we we're not using form C But I think we still want to copy what we did for the search form. And uh, okay, so no, we we yeah we we do want to use form C. Uh, the reason why is because right now we have no form elements. So if I were to do this and then like try to tap my enter key, it wouldn't do anything because the submit event is linked to clicking that button you know it's basically a on click submit form but now that we're adding more fields especially like a, an input field uh, we we do want to handle the case where somebody just hits enter or submits some other way so we are going to use a form element here Um, we'll do that, which means we can remove the onclick. We can also use formatted message for this, this, and this. change that here so from to number of guests from to and number of guests so this is important not only because this makes it easy to internationalize the the app translate it and so on but also if this uh, were to become a theme or an example app, it makes it very easy to change any string in the app without having to actually change the component where that string is used. And that's super handy. Form is not defined, that makes sense. Form input, we need both. Okay, now if I do this and I hit enter, well, I guess I guess nothing happens yet. I probably broke something in the process. But uh, that's basically what we want. So we have our three form fields and we have uh, this dot submit form, which calls a mutation. Now, what do we want to do? We have a success callback which pushes a uh, route. So we change routes and we show a flash message. So Uh, why is my event not working? Now, one thing you might notice is I'm not using smart forms here. I built my own form. The reason why, if I remember correctly, is because, first of all, we want to disable any dates that are in the past, also dates that are already booked for this room, and also uh, if I pick August 24th, I want to disable anything before that because you can't check out uh, before your check-in date. And I, I said I was kind of too complex to do this with smart forms. 
I still think it is, but we have to be aware that um, we're we're losing a lot of things, so we we don't have any validation, for example. So uh, right now the the click thing is not working, but if it were, um, we would need to build in some validation logic for empty forms and and uh, so on. But we can probably do that. And if not, we can always find a way to get back to smart forms later. But at least this way, you know, we are, uh, let's say we are prototyping our component and then we'll refactor it in a cleaner way later on. So I'm just trying to figure out why on submit isn't doing anything. So, Is it because I forgot this? Could be. Um, do I need label? So what do I put here? Probably this. Okay. Cool. Uh, so let's go back to our booking schema. We don't actually have a number of guests field, so we definitely need this. Type string, viewable by guest, edit insertable by members, editable by admins because um, you shouldn't be able to change your booking after you make it, at least for now. Okay, so this means we can then pass this on to the mutation. So actually this will be a call with a data object and right so if we're using forms here uh, we need to re rethink some of this so actually well the problem is this uh, so input is a form C component so its value will be serial serialized into the form state and passed as the data argument to submit form but daytime picker isn't, so we have to manage it independently. So I think this is why this has to come from the state and this has to come from uh, the form data. Now, we also want to... We also want to uh, update the price based on the number of nights and the number of guests, so it means number of guests does need to be in the state anyway actually so we need something to update the number of uh, this dot update I guess this, this update guests Uh, we need to bind it, of course. Uh, 
Um, so this is logging out the name of the field. That's not what we want, definitely. Input on change. I feel like I already did this, did this for the search form. It's value name. So if I inspect this, bookings new form, state from the Merca zero nights to total price. So this works at least, okay. Number of guests, uh, it doesn't work, but that's expected now. Why is it not giving me the value of the field when I call uh, on change? No on change. Um, I mean, I guess the form C approach is like you put everything in your, like you use your form C React components and then you just submit and that's it. Well, the, I'm trying to mix that up with an approach where you manage your components manually through the state and they're not like playing super well together. So I guess maybe I should have an on change here. So actually, because, well, I do have an on change on this and in smart forms. Okay, that was it. Okay, that was really simple. So the first argument is the name, and then the second is the value. So it actually should work. So actually, it shouldn't be a problem. And then here we'll do a this set state number of guests equals value. Uh, data is not defined because it's value. Okay. okay, okay, we're back. We're back to where we wanted to be. So the state, I guess you could say the state of this form is going to be managed both in the internal state of the component. And when I click submit, uh, this field only will also be passed as part of the data argument of the submit form function. Obviously, uh, that's kind of unnecessary because we also have it in the state. But um, you know, sometimes you just have to do things twice. I could also not use form C at all, which is probably what I should do. Um, But yeah, I'm always just a bit wary of using uh, <laughs> naked React forms for some reason. I guess it would work the same way. I can do that and then that. Input text value on change. And then we don't care about this. Yeah. It's probably better to use a vanilla 
React rather than Form C if we don't need it. And again, the reason we don't need it is because we are already storing the number of guests value in the local class state for the bookings new form component. And the reason we are doing that is because we need it to calculate the price based on the number of guests and number of nights. So knowing all that, it means we don't need form C because the whole point of form C is you don't need to manage your uh, com form state, your form component state individually, which we are doing. So of course we lost all the classes, but okay, <laughs> not a number. What do you mean not a number? Null. W right, okay, I guess it's null because this time the value is probably being passed as the first argument. Oh no, okay, now I remember. No, this time the event is passed as a first argument, which means we need to get the value from the event. And then the event is this thing that's like completely and like so that's why I don't get with react forms because it looks like this is completely wrong for uh, for what react gives us because I mean this is our event and um, it says event target value okay I guess yeah no uh, if you're seeing this you're asking the property target blah 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 So this is worth investigating maybe later, but I don't get why I'm uh, I don't get why I'm getting like I don't get why the the really basic form example is not working for me. I don't know if it's a thing with the version of React or if I'm doing something else. I might a ask in the reactive flux like the React channel later, but I guess for now I'll just use form C because that was working at least. And I mean, I do prefer the form C API. It makes it just makes sense. It's kind of cleaner because it's passing you don't want to, what do I care about the event, right? I want the name and value, mostly the value. So uh, this is the case where I feel React is giving you a pretty crappy implementation. Or I guess you could say it's just low level. Uh, but I think Form C is a bit better. So back to our app, what we want to do is show the price. So, um, how do we do that? Well, here we can probably have like well, so actually we'll calculate this based on the other variables. So we should have the room, this props room, okay. So We have our price per night, which we multiply by the number of um, nights. I, I guess first guests, and then number of nights. How do we get the number of nights? Well, so we're gonna do. Um, so I think this gives already gives us moments. So this dot state dot from uh, is it diff? I think 
Uh, is there a search for for these docs? No. Okay, a diff diff. So from dot diff this state two, and we want that in days. So we multiply this whole thing by the number of nights, and we add like a dollar sign. Um, so that should be equal to zero at first. Or maybe that. So Airbnb has this whole thing where depending on the nights they'll change the the price and stuff. Like this in itself would be a huge amount of work because you need to do some stuff on the back end too. This state from diff is not a function, isn't from a moment. Maybe it's not. I guess it's just a date. Oh, because I do two dates. So, um, yeah, I don't want to do that. I want to do that maybe here. Let's keep those as moments as long as possible so that they're uh, easier to manipulate. Now, yeah, back to what I was saying. If you have to calculate, if your client gets, is like, well, by the way, we have low and high seasons and uh, we want to have a discount on longer uh, rentals and um, this and that and like for two people it's not twice as expensive it's like 50% as expensive but it depends on the number of rooms so in their mind it might be super clear like all these various rules but when it's your job to translate those rules into code to me at least that that's really scary because uh, something seemingly simple might turn out to be like a whole thing you need to modify the back end which means to you need to make one more request do you need a new resolver you need a new container and for the client it's like well you know just just do just do it it took me 10 seconds to explain why does it take you like two weeks to implement but often that can be the case so what i'm saying is we're uh <laughs> negative price okay yeah. okay no that makes total sense because we are uh, two minus from yeah for now we'll just do a super simple calculation number of nights multiplied by number of guests multiple apply by number of uh, of what was it multiple multiply by price but I'm saying all that because I know uh, my friend who has this uh, company here in Japan, he actually wants to uh, interface this with Airbnb in the sense that people would be able to search Airbnb properties. Now, obviously, if you do that, you probably also want to show the same prices as Airbnb because he actually wants to you know, show you Airb uh, results from the Airbnb API. So I'm hoping the Airbnb API also gives you access to price data because otherwise uh, I have no idea how I would even figure out um, the right price based on just that information. So let's add some styling. We, we want a class here.
Okay. Maybe add a little bit more uh, padding here. So cool. So when we create a booking, we'll pick dates, number uh, of guests, book. Um, we are probably missing a message. Bookings page. Oh, actually here. So success. Where is it? Flash booking dot created. I think this should be bookings. And um, complete payment here. Yeah, the price is not right, so. A oh, very unpopular game show, actually. So, booking page, checkout, no, no, no. So, we have our product key. Um, but we have to tell our product how to get the price. And our product. Where is our product, actually? Uh, maybe in bookings? Okay, so let me close off some of the, these tabs to make my life easier. Okay, so bookings page. We should be creating a product somewhere. I guess maybe we're not. Okay, so let's do it. So in modules, we'll uh, create a new products.js file. And um, I'm going to bring up sidebar real quick and just copy this. So in sidebar's case, it's uh, sponsorship. Here it's going to be a uh, booking. This is going to be the booking object. Um, name. So amount. So as you can see, you, we can calculate the amount based on the dates and on the, all the same information we had before. Uh, we definitely don't want to pass the amount like from the client. That's something that could be tempting. So what I mean by this is we, we could be like, well, we're already calculating the amount here, right? So why not just pass this to the server? The reason why is because then people can just pick whatever amount they want. So it's very important that we calculate that, that value again f on the server from the same data. So here we're going to say, uh, so booking dot, now this is where it gets tricky because as you can see, um, we need to access the room and I'm not sure how we do that yet, but anyway, this would be booking number of guests. And number of nights would be um, this. So let's um,
Okay. So this time it, it will be or it will already be on the booking, so we can just say booking from booking. Well, actually they'll be fine, so we can just do this. Booking to diff booking from day zero. Uh, not zero days. Um, we don't need a coupon and booking dot. Okay, so now the thing is we need we need to access data about the room. So can we do something like booking dot room dot name? Uh, I mean, that's what we want to do, ideally, right? And um, well, it all depends where and how we are getting this booking thing. And then amount would be booking.room. Now, this would be fine if uh, we were on the client and querying through GraphQL, but this happens on the server. And uh, if we look at the payments package, um, if um, associated with collection ID have been provided, um, that's, yeah. So basically, if that's the case, we update the document and we no, it's okay. Yeah, okay. that's it. So we call define product. So on document and document comes from here. Now, because we're doing a collection dot find one, we are querying the database directly and the database is not GraphQL. So the database doesn't have a dot room field. So what I'm saying here is we either, we need to do, you know, a couple things. Either here, we need to import, that's probably the simplest thing we can do import um, well I guess okay no, solution one import products or not products uh, bookings rooms import rooms from uh, mod collection rooms uh, opposite rooms collection. And then here's the like, okay, counts room equals rooms dot find one. Um, room ID equals booking dot room. And then this will give us our room. Now the problem with this is that this won't work on the client. And why do we need this on the client? Well, because here we are um, also we're using the same logic. So if, if we go to the checkout component, you can see um, define product, nah, 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 nah. if the product is a function, call it on the associated document, which will be passed uh, here. So now when we call this function on the client, this will uh, definitely not work. We won't have a find one. Well, we have find one on the client, but it it always returns empty because the collection is not populated on the client. So what we can do though is um, first look for bookings.room and if that's empty then we know we're on the um, client. Wait, so if this is not empty, we're on the client. If this is empty, we're on the server. And why would this not be empty on the client? Because we're gonna Add it to our GraphQL schema. So bookings schema room ID. We already have room ID. 
we can copy what we're doing for the user schema or maybe a actually let's say a post schema uh, user ID resolve as so we, we, we resolve user ID as user here and similarly we're going to resolve room ID as room so the type is going to be a room and here we're going to be like okay if post user we don't need that room equals await context dot rooms dot loader load um, so here we want the booking yeah we, this is the booking schema right yeah so booking dot room id that and return we don't have any restricted fields I think but you know just so we are safe return what the return the room okay yeah and we want to add the original field room ID okay Cool. So I mentioned this was one solution. The other solution would be maybe better actually. It would be to, instead of querying Mongo here, uh, query the GraphQL endpoint from the server to the server. And in order to do that, we would need to import the GraphQL schema and then write a GraphQL query. So it would be more code than this, but on the other hand, we would be using the exact same uh, data uh, querying APIs on server and client, which would seem a lot better. But for now, let's see if this works, because this is easier to implement. So, um, okay, not quite. Maybe we just forgot to import that. So I mean, whenever you work on an isomorphic app, meaning an app that works both on server and client, you'll run into these uh, these issues. Cannot read property diff of undefined. Oh, I think they're not named to and from, are they? They're named start at and end at. So, and at first and start at. So whenever you have the same code running on both uh, environments, you'll have these issues of both environments having access to different data sets. In theory, GraphQL could be a, a great solution for that. Um, but I haven't actually used it from the from server to server before, so that's something I need to look into. It might complain because I'm not formatting it properly. I don't know. Bookings is not defined. Uh, price per night. Okay, so booking.room is not there. The reason why is because we haven't asked for it in our fragment and we don't actually have a fragment. So what we have now is um, a default fragment. And the default fragment is not smart enough to follow resolvers. So in other words, um, we have room ID in our default fragment, but we don't have room. So we'll need to uh, specify a real fragment for bookings at least. So ID created that 
uh, user ID. So user ID, user, we can keep both. Room ID, room, start at, end at. number of guests and pay that okay and now um, we have our booking page bookings bookings page options bookings fragment name bookings item fragments so that will uh, should at least query all our fields, including the room field, the, the special uh, or not. Uh, bookings item fragment. Bookings item fragment, that sounds correct to me. Is it possible that we are loading it too late? Yeah, we are. We always want to load our fragments before our components because Otherwise, when this is evaluated, uh, which is a, a component, the fragment isn't defined. OK, so let's reload. Cannot read property pay that of undefined. OK, that's interesting. So it seems like maybe our document is not loading. Uh, I mean, oh, okay, we have a um, count query field user on type booking. Right. Okay, no, that, that, that makes total sense because although I have um, a resolver on room ID, I don't want to have one on user ID. So, um, Yeah, it's it's always basically the same thing. So um, more or less the same thing. Except this is uh, the booking. Context users. Users find one, and then we restrict the fields. Now, in the other one, we were using uh, yeah, that, that's a bit better. That's kind of the new syntax, actually. Okay, so that that's better. The reason why is because um, if we do, let's do it. This way, this way we use uh, the uh, loader, data loader, and we don't need to do another query for the user, which is probably already in memory. So we'll do that instead. So uh, users loader load, uh, user booking dot user ID this, this, this time. Uh, this. <sighs> this is users because this time so this is the collection we are loading data from. Here we were loading data, data from rooms. Now we are loading data from users. And the document is the user. OK. Await. Oh, so this needs to be async. Um, and it's okay. Cool. Right. Okay. That that also makes total sense. Uh, let's just use the ID for now. Um, maybe display name too. But we'll do the same for room actually. So um, 
whether we want to, want to load from the room, so the price per night, the name, and that, that's it for now. I uh, cannot read property type of undefined. So what's that all about? So component card. So bookings page, so this is fine. Card. So um, type, what's type? So I'm going get doing get type name. Okay, so now the problem is that room doesn't have, yeah, room is not part of the schema, which is going to throw an error because the card um, doesn't handle that case, actually. So uh, the card is going to try and display the object, but it's going to try and find that on the schema. So what we want to do is something like this. But of course, this is gonna um, well, this is getting complex because now we want to okay. So field name here is gonna be rooms, room, room singular. So first, we want to see if this is a resolver uh, field. So we want to say, uh, but we don't know which. Okay, so let's go back to, so this is card item. Um, this is a mess. So the behavior we do want is to display the room in the card, but we don't know how to figure out the type for the, the, the thing. I'm just gonna do uh, string. I don't know. Well, we're gonna have the same problem here. It would be easier to just not use uh, the card, I think, at this point, or or let's uh, restrict it, actually. So I, I'm gonna undo the really crappy workarounds I did, and for now I'm just gonna restrict the card. So fields equals array, and that would be. Uh, let's check our schema. Start that and that. Well, 
So it looks like we forgot to um, multiply by this gives us the the price in um, this right here in s cents in dollars I mean because price per night is in dollars so we need to multiply the whole thing by a hundred to get the number of cents right which is what uh, stripe expects um, now here now that we have the actual um, room we can do this um, so document dot room dot name So let's double check with the um, so one thousand five hundred, three thousand, okay, three thousand, three thousand, okay. So I did have an issue earlier with this. No, it seems to. Oh no, okay. Something went wrong. Cannot read property price per night of undefined. So this time it's uh, when this is happening on the. Um, yeah. On the server, and yes, it should be just room. Let's try again. Help with property name. Same mistake, sorry. Again. Oh, okay, okay. Abstract types chargeable must result to an object type at runtime for field mutation. No, no, no. So I think I had this before. It does work in the end, so pay that gets set, but we have this error. So uh, this has gone on pretty long already, much longer than I thought. Um, but we did get some stuff done. We cleaned out the screen. We added this pretty cool uh, slideshow. We did the form and uh, the booking. So next time, well, on my to-do list to improve, first I take care of this error. That's number one. Number two, maybe uh, make the card uh, display the uh, resolved fields properly as well. That would be cool. And number three, uh, think about how, or is a Stripe JS? How database calls can be replaced by uh, GraphQL calls on the server as well, so that we can be sure that we have the same uh, data structure, whereas whether we're calling calls from the client or from the server. For today, I think this is a pretty good session. Um, thanks uh, to everybody who tuned in, and. Uh, 
hopefully you learned something and hopefully you learn even more next time.